So a lot of people seem to have anxiety issues where they feel like they cannot take a satisfying breath. This is called chronic overbreathing syndrome or hyperventilation syndrome. Yes, I know it's a bit creepy here the way I'm like filming this video. It's late at night and I just had the inspiration to film um, as I'm out and about right now. So waiting on someone right now. So anyway. Hyperventilation syndrome, overbreathing syndrome, uh, a lot of people don't realize when you are having a panic attack, when you're having an episode of anxiety, uh, one of the major, uh, the main, sometimes the primary root um, physio physiological uh, symptom that you'll notice is breathing, it becomes shallow, and a lot of times... Um, it feels like you can't get a, a sufficient deep breath or maybe you'll be hyperventilating to where you're like huffing and puffing and panting and you're breathing really fast. Um, that's basically an acute panic attack. Um, and if you are under stress or anxiety, your breathing will change. Basically, breathing will change. You'll get shallow. And um, for people with um, long-term chronic anxiety, you will notice um, your breathing is not satisfying all of the time, so you're always feeling like you're not getting enough air. The truth of the matter is, it's exactly the opposite. You're getting too much oxygen and not enough carbon dioxide, or CO2 as they call it. And so it feels like you need to breathe more, but what you really need to do is breathe less and slow down your breathing. And put specific attention on the outward breath. So when you breathe inward, Breathe in slowly, and don't hold your breath at the top. That'll cause more tension in the body. And then slowly, as slow as you can, as I'm speaking, my breath is slowly letting out. Singing is good too, because if you hold notes long, you're uh, essentially holding, uh, you're essentially letting the breath out low, slowly. Like, ah, uh, like what is that? That's your voice box and air coming out of your mouth slowly. So it's uh, singing can be a good form of breath work. Okay, that's why singers spend a lot of time um, doing breath work and they do professional, they get professional lessons on how to control their breathing. So singing is good. Um, just make sure you're not breathing in all the time. A lot of people with uh, this chronic over breathing syndrome will notice um, you're always breathing in. And they'll also notice they're always sighing, but, <sighs> like they're sighing too much or yawning. Yawning is a common uh, symptom of over breathing syndrome. And what you really need to do is whenever you are about to yawn, don't hold in the yawn. But instead, stop the yawning and try to just breathe outward slowly instead. Okay? And do it regularly. So a normal, uh, casual, gentle breath, but just slow it down. And you'll notice that the yawn will go away and you'll feel a lot better. It takes a lot of practice when you are working with your breath. Um, but eventually, over time, I'm confident that you'll find uh, the right techniques and ways of regulating your breathing. And to be completely honest, this is what I want to start the video with, but whatever, fuck it, I'm just kind of like winging it, you know, it's like a YOLO thing. What you should actually try doing, because a lot of people, they try too hard to control their breath, and that's actually what's causing it. Like, like for me, for example, I had a panic attack a long time ago, and it triggered more anxiety about my breathing. I thought I was having a heart attack and all this stuff, and I kept trying to breathe in more. And it just made it worse, and it made me have a full-fledged panic attack. And then for two, actually for about four years after that first panic attack, I was over aware of my breathing to the point where I'd be driving and I'm trying to, um, regulate my breathing, you know, but what's interesting is I spent four years trying to regulate my breathing and I got nowhere with it. A lot of times I made it worse, you know, the t techniques I was trying was making it even worse. And it's interesting because I know I, I read a lot of, uh, forum posts and stuff on the internet about, you know, and I have comments on some of my videos where people say they've been dealing with this uh, overbreathing syndrome for over 10 years, you know, for years and years. And they went from doctor to doctor and they basically became a hypochondriac. Um, so the interesting thing is they're trying so hard to find the solution to their problem. And I was one of those people and it just makes it worse because you worry yourself sick. And I think essentially at the root of this problem is stress, worry, and fear. 
And so you could try to regulate your breathing, but isn't that what you've been trying to do since the beginning of all this? And whenever you start to notice your problem, your over-breathing problem, you start to try to regulate your breath and you start to try to effort out of it. Does that ever help you? Probably not if you're watching this video, you still haven't figured out what's wrong. So what I'd recommend instead of trying to find breathing techniques, a lot of people just want to sell you products and shit. There are a lot of good breathing techniques out there, and there's yogis and uh, you know uh, gurus and whatnot who have been practicing breathing techniques for thousands of years. Um, but I think you should learn how to control your mind before you learn how to control your breath. Because I've had success with breathing techniques, but only when I'm able to calm my mind. And I think a combination of calming, relaxing mantras or affirmations, such as everything's okay, life's good, I don't give a fuck, like if I pass out or die, I don't give a fuck, like, you know, as a matter of fact, come on, I'm ready to die, bring on death, or just whatever it takes. Say whatever it takes to get you in that feeling state of everything's going to be okay. And slow your breathing down at the same time. Be just like you're like you would expect a, a mother to be, you know, trying to comfort her baby. Be the same way to yourself. Be that comfort for yourself. And do this as you're breathing slowly. And I'm telling you, this this combination will be very, very good. Another thing you can do, um, if you can learn how to master your focus, right? If you're good at, at focusing in and concentrating on things, because a lot of people just concentrating too much on trying to figure out the problem and their worries and they're they're stressing themselves out because they're focusing on the wrong shit. Another thing you can do, um, don't ignore your problem, but try to change your focus, like channeling your focus away from from uh, you know, oh my god, what's you know, the the there's these problems and blah 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 to like some music. Like if you're in the car and you're having a panic attack, put on some music and really try just listen. Or wherever you are. Get really silent and listen to the sounds in the environment. Pay very close attention. And you can hear little car motors in the background, birds chirping, maybe trees swaying, and if you and then and then we get deeper and deeper focusing on your environment, you'll hear more and more details that you weren't listen hearing before. And before you know it, you're able to breathe gently and normally and naturally again because you change your focus from all the shit that's bogging you down to the present moment. That's why you hear so many people talking about the present moment and meditation and all this because essentially you need to get away from this hyper awareness of your body and this worry and shit because this is causing a, a fight or flight response in your body. So by shifting your focus into something that makes you feel more calm, more present, or even something like music that will distract you, you could say, but more so it's kind of like changing your focus to music, changing your, like looking on your Facebook news feed, right? That's what a lot of people do. They just binge on Facebook and read a bunch of bullshit. But if that helps you calm down, that's better than being feeling anxious. But I'd suggest you read a book or uh, go into conversations with people. I think the problem with social anxiety is people tend to judge themselves and they're like, oh, how is this person perceiving me? I bet they think I'm an idiot. I'd better not pick my nose in front of this person. You know, they're they're hyper aware and worrying um, about what people think about them and their own body. Hyper aware of their body. They're being too self-conscious and worried about the bullshit. And instead, what you should do is listen to the people in the environment. Like, try to talk to people, right? Like, if you go to the supermarket, the grocery store, talk to the clerk. Talk to people around you. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, no, I'm afraid of talking to people. And you will be at first, but over time, if you just start slowly, just say, hey, how are you doing? Or whatever, at least to the cashier, somebody who, who, who whose whole job is to communicate with other people, right? Um, like the hostess at a hotel or a waiter or a waitress or what have you. Um, when you focus on these conversations, they can take you away from your problems, Okay. So talking to other people, you know, and getting really immersed in conversation. And another thing is don't be talking about your worries. Don't be focusing on what's wrong with yourself, but instead focus on what's right or what could go right or try to focus on the light of things. Because I noticed that was one thing I would do is every single person that I would meet when I first had this high over breathing problem and this anxiety, I would ask them about it. I'd be like, oh, have you ever had this happen? Like, I think I'm over, like... 
a lot of people there don't even you know what the fuck I'm talking about. They don't give a fuck. And even if they do, like I, I met a lot of great people who have uh, actually taught me a lot about health. And some of them are my best friends today. But um, even the people who had answers, who had really good answers, really good information, didn't help me. Because the problem is not external information. The problem is your where are you putting your focus on what's going wrong, what could go wrong, uh, all the potential bad things that could happen, the worries, like the worries, and you're visualizing all this crap that could go wrong, visualizing, you know, other people like shaking their head at you and, and, and calling you names and visualizing other people perceiving you bad and visualizing, you know, your car crashing. What you should do instead is visualize the opposite. Whenever you get yourself visualizing bad shit happening to you, um, start to try, start to change it. Don't beat yourself over you be, don't beat yourself up over it because we all have our, our times in life where things, you know, go wrong, where things fuck up. We all have our negative moments and it's human nature and it's a habit of thought. The only way you can really change this is forget about, forget about it and then change the visualization. It doesn't matter where you are. Okay. This is probably the one time when, uh, exiting the present moment is, is a really good thing. This is one of the beneficial things you can do uh, to ex if you want to escape the present moment is spend it wisely. Visualize good things happening to you and I'm telling you, uh, maybe you won't manifest like a million dollars or something doing this, but what you will definitely do without a doubt, without a doubt, and this will happen almost instantly once you get good at visualization, you really start to feel the visualization, you will get rid of anxiety and worry. If you can get good at visualizing it, you'll, your focus will improve, creativity will improve, and um, your memory will probably improve, and um, your mood can improve, because then at will, whenever you're feeling down, you start to use visualization therapy. My mom did this to me a long time ago, but I'm telling you, it's a lot about the visualization, because whenever you're worrying, you may not even be aware of this, but there's pictures and, and, and images and movies going through your head of all the shit you're scared of, I'm telling you. So a lot of it is just changing your focus away from that worry. A lot of it is visualizing good shit happening to you, the exact opposite, the positive opposite of the of what's, of, of things you're worried about. A lot of it is just that. And that will change you from being in a fight or flight response, having anxiety and having these breathing problems, to being in a relaxation response, being able to breathe gently, naturally, calmly, and deeply. So um, if changing your breathing doesn't help, change your focus, learn how to feel yourself into relaxation, and visualize good things, use affirmations, don't effort it, okay, pay attention to how you feel, if when you fucking say an affirmation or a mantra, you're feeling bad, that's not the way to do it, you need to feel your way into it, and sometimes just saying certain gibberish, kind of like, exerts a certain emotion or feeling, it's weird, sometimes I'll catch myself just like, eh, know, just like, saying some random bullshit, it doesn't really make sense logically, um, but it's almost like I'm, I'm humming some kind of like, I don't know, ancient Hinduism language. I don't know. It's just, I'm, I'm, hu I'm humming some kind of weird thing. And it's like the vibration of whatever the gibberish is in my head is actually causing my body to feel better. I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of ancient caveman thing before they had language, you know, that's kind of, I don't know, but I'm just telling you what the fuck helps me. So, one last thing you can do, of course, is obviously, you know, follow some of my advice and my suggestions on diet. Try to find something real clean that uh, helps you feel good. And it's all about feeling good. If it gives you energy, it helps you relax. That's what's up. Eating lighter, eating a pescatarian diet, maybe with no grains or no starches, whatever. Pescatarian diet is very light. And you're not really vegan or vegetarian. You have a lot of options. Really, really good for you because of all the omega-3s and you're not missing any nutrients at all and you're still eating very light. Um, whatever. Um, but supplements. Ashwagandha, great, great herb. Uh, go ahead and check out my video. I have a video on ashwagandha. Gochu Cola is really good. Um, helps boost circulation, reduce anxiety, and help you relax and also helps to increase neuron growth in your brain. Um, so I think helps to increase dendrites or something like that, but it helps to, uh, you know, 
protect and grow your brain neurons. Um, it also helps to increase brain-derived neurotropic factor, which basically helps your mind uh, kind of sort things out and, and makes you, um, you know, put together different situations of your life and put together thoughts better. And basically, it helps to, like, it's like taking all your thoughts, like um, a bunch of files in the cabinet, and organizing them all uh, more efficiently, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what Go to Cola helps you do, um, as well as boosting circulation, so it'll help you breathe better. Um, and it works excellent in synergy with ashwagandha. Also, for some of you people who uh, feel lethargic and you don't feel motivated, and if you're like a, have a bunch of addictions to porn and you know whatever it may be, caffeine, uh, you could try to start uh, building your dopamine levels. I recommend Makuna Purin, so you could just search up Makuna, um, and also L tyrosine. I think I have a video. I just released a video on that a little while ago. I've been talking about it a lot to my friends and other people. And I've been writing a lot of articles and essays and doing a lot of research on dopamine and tyrosine lately. I'm actually going to be having, uh, I'm going to be creating a video kind of soon about how to build your dopamine levels naturally and also uh, with the help of uh, certain herbs and supplements as well. Um, but overall, there's a lot of great ways to build your dopamine. For one, eat a lot of fruits, including bananas, avocados, mangoes, um, tomatoes, and then eat a lot of cocoa powder. I mean, raw. Um, you know, cocoa powder, unsweetened, regular cocoa powder, preferably not Dutch process, just regular cocoa powder, not Dutch process. Okay, it's cheap, it's like $3 for like a half a pound, it's really good. Blend it up in a smoothie with some coconut sugar, um, and then add some whey protein, okay, about 20 to 40 grams of whey protein, and then you can add some peanut butter, uh, and maybe some dry coconut, okay. And it's a really good smoothie to help build dopamine, and it's really simple. I add maca root, also really good for building dopamine. I add powdered maca root, and then uh, maybe take some tribulus with that, and maybe some um, ginkgo biloba that helps to increase the density of your dopamine. Um, and that should help you feel better and be more relaxed. So that's it for now. Um, I'll be releasing a video soon, hopefully, on how to build dopamine levels. Um, if you like this comment, if you like this fucking video, subscribe, and feel free to comment, spark up a conversation with me or a debate. Uh, if you want me to make a video specifically for you, go ahead and you send me a private message on my Facebook page at Wolfgang B. Lozana, Holistic Medicine and Philosophy. Uh, thank you, and have a great day.